tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon from WKYT. Bill Bryan and Barbara Bailey reporting. It has been 63 days since the U.S. Supreme Court legalized gay marriages across the nation. And it appears that the issue will end up back in front of the nation's highest court. Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis refuses to issue marriage licenses despite a court order. Her legal team now says they will file an emergency petition with the Supreme Court to have a justice review her appeal. Today, a show of support for Davis, another county clerk also refusing to issue a marriage license made a stop on his cross-state bike ride in Moorhead. Let's go to WKYT's Hillary Thornton, who is in Rowan County, to report on that for our top story at 1230. Hillary? Casey County Clerk Casey Davis just made a stop here in Rowan County, and as he made his visit in support of the clerk here, Kim Davis, he was greeted by rallies from both sides of this debate. The group standing on opposite sides of the courthouse, however, at times crossing paths, making for some heated exchanges, as each person here obviously feeling strongly about their stance. Someone else who is taking a strong stance, Casey County Clerk Casey Davis, who is riding from Pikeville to Paducah, making a stop here in Rowan County, riding into the courthouse to cheers from those opposing same-sex marriage and many messages from those who support it. Davis was also greeted by the Rowan County clerk, Kim Davis. The two stood with the crowd for a few minutes before going inside the office for a short meeting. Casey Davis now continues his bicycle ride and plans to be in Lexington tomorrow. Meanwhile, the group out here supporting same-sex marriage will have another rally tomorrow morning starting at 9 o'clock until noon. In Rowan County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Now, the group supporting same-sex marriage says it plans to rally every day the office is open until something changes. Three protesters arrested at the Kentucky State Fair went in front of a Louisville judge this morning. State police arrested the group yesterday at the Kentucky Farm Bureau's Country Ham Breakfast. The group says it was there protesting the Farm Bureau's stance on gay rights and other issues. The group entered not guilty pleas to failure to disperse. One was also charged with disorderly conduct. A man has been sentenced for murdering a Lexington teenager. This morning, a judge sentenced 24-year-old Deonta Hayes to 35 years in prison. A jury convicted Hayes of murder and assault in the death of 16-year-old Chaz Black. The teen was one of three people who were shot in an apartment on Palumbo Drive back in 2012. Hayes will be eligible for, for parole after serving 20 years. Two men accused of recruiting people in in Lexington to join a nationally known gang will go in front of a judge in about a half hour. Gerald and Gregory Smith are both charged with criminal gang recruiting. And according to court documents, the two were seen at Whitney Young Park beating someone as part of a gang initiation. The park was full of young children who were playing sports at the time. Police say the Smiths are part of the Chicago based Black P. Stones gang, also known as BPS. We're tracking down details this midday on a disturbing case from the UK campus. A Garrett County man is now in jail in Lexington on more than a dozen counts of voyeurism. UK police say the arrest of 24 year old Ryan Smith comes after a five month investigation. Investigators say the former UK student placed cameras in women's bathrooms across campus. Smith is due in court in a half hour. We'll have much more on this story later today on WKYT. Well, the governor of Florida has declared a state of emergency as tropical storm Erica heads closer to the United States. And the storm hit Puerto Rico today after battering the Caribbean island of Dominica on Thursday, killing at least 20 people. Maribel Rodriguez of our CBS affiliate in Miami is there with the latest. Tropical storm Erica hit Puerto Rico Friday. The storm with winds up to 50 miles per hour knocked down trees and power lines on the southern part of the island. The storm caused deadly flooding and mudslides Thursday on the Caribbean island of Dominica as rivers overflowed into the streets. The building collapsed as water crashed into its foundation. Erica could intensify into a Category 1 hurricane by the time it reaches the east coast of the United States. This is where it gets tricky as we head into late Sunday and Monday. Possibly a tropical storm, Erica, moving across South Florida by Monday morning, then riding up the spine of the state of Florida. Florida has declared a state of emergency as it gets ready for what could be its first hurricane in a decade. 
Here in Miami Dade, a local concrete company is giving out free sandbags to residents as they prepare for Tropical Storm Eric. As you can see, residents are taking advantage of this. More than a thousand bags have been given out. Just in case, getting ready because it says that it will come with water, lots of water. And crews have been setting up pumps to keep the water from flooding Miami's beaches. Maribel Rodriguez for CBS News, West Miami. And again, it could hit the Miami area maybe as early as Monday or Tuesday. Meteorologists say the Gulf states may also be in jeopardy if Erica veers west in the coming days. Well, our flirt with fall is coming to an end. Things are going to warm up as we go into the weekend, and we could even see a little rain. Meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking the changes heading our way in the First Alert Weather Center. Micah. Yeah, we're seeing this day coming where we are going to have those temperatures in the 80s later on this afternoon. Now, the difference from today is 80s to the weekend's 80s. The moisture content is really not very humid outside, so we're going to be holding on to uh, pretty decent conditions in toward the afternoon. Here's a look on Live Sky Camera. You can see your temperatures 75 degrees in Richmond, 74 there in Jackson, and all of us sitting there in the 70s, except for Bell County. You guys are already at 80 degrees. Here comes that warm air streaming on in here. 82 is where most of us will settle in later on this afternoon. Now, check out these headlines, okay? The weekend changes are there, there's no doubt. A lot more moisture and also uh, the, the warmer temperatures, but also some thunder. We'll throw that in the forecast. And then something that we really have to be watching next week, I know it's far away. We'll just go ahead and mention it to you. But Erica's effects, which is Tropical Storm Erica, the effects next week, that will affect us in some sort of way. I'll explain the options we have with that coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. And we thank you. Kroger is closing one of its longtime stores in Lexington. The Cincinnati based grocery chain announced this morning the Romney Road store will close. The last day will be September 12th. Kroger says the store has lost significant money since 2008. The store employs 103 people. Kroger says they will all be offered employment at other Lexington area stores. The brand new Euclid Kroger and the recently renovated Shenaway Kroger are both within a couple of miles of the Romney Road location. Well, there's a new addition at the Cincinnati Zoo. A western lowland gorilla named Anu gave birth Tuesday morning. This is Anu's first baby and the 50th gorilla born at the Cincinnati Zoo since 1970. The keepers were able to get this video of mom and her new baby girl. They have not decided yet on a name. All right, sweet Very scene there sweet. at the zoo. <laughs> well, we have a lot more coming up on WKYT News here on your Friday afternoon. All aboard for a unique experience on the Abraham Lincoln funeral train. We'll talk with the conductor about what you can expect. Also, bidding farewell to Falls. Important tips for those you love as they get older.